back to you too. Louise, thanks very much. Have a lovely weekend. 9.50 time now. When Eric Tuck Tucker, a builder from Warrington, passed away last year, his family discovered more than 400 paintings and sketches he'd done in his spare time. They put them on display in his home and thousands of people queued to see them. And they've drawn comparisons with L.S. Lowry and his work has been hailed as an important discovery in British art. Yes, and you see some of them on the sofa with us this morning. His uh, loved ones have fulfilled one of Eric's final wishes to have an exhibitor in a gallery in his hometown. We're joined by art critic Ruth Millington and Eric's nephew Joe, who's been kind enough to bring along some of the pictures. Thank you. Joe, thank you very much Morning. for bringing them in. Thanks Just for explain us. to people. So, so he, he had like a, a stash. The family knew he was painting. Yes. But hadn't seen much of it? How, how yeah. he kept it so secret? Well, I, it, it wasn't quite that he kept it secret, but he just didn't, um, you know, he didn't shout about it. Um, so, we, yeah, we knew he painted. We would, you know, you would see he, he, he used his front room as a studio. Um, so, you know, you, we would always see there was something sort of on the easel there. Um, and if you, if you asked, he would, he would bring you in and say, yeah, sure, have a look. But he just didn't... You know, he didn't get the work out and say, look at what I've done. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't really until after he died, um, towards the end of his life, then after he died, that my dad went round the house and discovered, you know, every room was full, you know, stacked full of these paintings. Um, you know, hundreds of them. Ruth, are they good? Because <laughs> they look great. Well, I was asked about a year ago to have a look at some of these images and I had no idea what to expect and... I was blown away by them because there are clear comparisons to Lowry here in sort of street corners and people meeting in front of this urban industrial landscape. But then there's also surrealist influences and he's developed his own a brand new style, distinctive style, and it's such a unique vision. So the image you were talking about a moment ago, can, can, if we, can we get the shot on, on the one that's just between us here? So that's one you're referring to here. So with your yeah. art critic mind, yeah. so just talk us through the picture and why, why it has sort of special value? So Eric Tucker met Lowry in a gallery in Manchester and he really admired his work. And you can see the influence in pictures like this one. What do you here. see? Go on, take us so, through it then. You've got the figures meeting, this sort of tableau of um, characters in front of the very traditional terraced red brick houses. You've got the smoking chimneys in the background. The black that, cat up here. Black cat That's too. It. Moody sky. It's very atmospheric. So now his parlour or his um, studio yeah. is going to be recreated. Yes, it has been in Warrington Museum. Um, yeah, they've basically... Th that was the room where, you know, he lived in a sort of... Well, it was an ex-council house in Warrington, and his front room was where he, he painted every single painting. Doesn't that feel a bit surreal? Yeah, it's weird, you know, it's strange. <laughs> um, I mean, it's nice to kind of, you know... It was nice to go into the museum and see all this stuff there, you know, as it was, as I remember it. So what did your dad think about, about all these paintings? I mean, it just seems so bizarre that he, a talented artist, you say that the house was full of them, yeah. no-one really thought they were any good? Is that what the family thought? I'll just oh, leave no, we, him to potter well, we, about? Well, we were always... Actually, my dad, more than anyone, always encouraged him to... You know, you've got to try and get the work seen, you've got to try and get it exhibited, but he was very resistant. Um, he wouldn't do it. Um, they had a, they had a few goes, um, but he, yeah, he just we don't we don't know exactly why, but he was just always very resistant to having his work shown until the very end of his life when he said, mm. "I would I would like these paintings to be seen." As I understand it, there has been public demand. I mean, there have been, been plenty of people queuing up to see the pictures. Yes. Well, we did. We the first thing we did was we did this exhibition at his house. Um, this was last year because we, we were kind of like, well, how do, we, how do we get his pictures seen? And it seemed like, well, this is where he painted them all. We should, we should open his So you, were you just literally lining the walls of the room? Yeah, we right? just... We, we, <laughs> Did you go? Did you see... Oh, I didn't... Uh, okay. uh, Ruth had really make it up point. there. Yeah, Apparently just, people were lining up around the block. Yeah, so. we had... Um, yeah, it, we, it was about... We, we opened for two days. It was sort of a, two cold days in October. Um, and we didn't know how many people would come. You know, I'd done a kind of Facebook event that, you know... But we didn't really know how many people would come. And then, yeah, they, the queue started forming at, at 9 a.m. and it, it just it didn't go down. So, Ruth, as an art critic, I mean, obviously, these are labours of love. Um, but value? 
It's so hard to put a value on these at the moment. What I would say is that they are part of modern British art history and they need to be rewritten into that narrative. There's clear comparisons with British surrealists, people like Julian Trevelyan or Emmy Bridgewater. So the value is going to be so great. Someone turned up at the, uh, at the house with £800 asking to buy one of the pictures and it will be considerably more than that. I'll tell you what, to a degree, I suppose there's provenance, isn't there? As in there's a story attached to it, which is part of the joy of it. You know, a hidden stash that, yeah. that mm. is now made public. People love that. Yeah, I think so, yeah. It is, yeah, it, that's it. He was, he, he's an interesting character. Um, there aren't there aren't many artists, I suppose, who are kind of Xboxers and you know building site labourers who who've uh, yeah who've just worked away at it quietly for sixty years. So who's I think he, who's he left the paintings to? Um, I think to I think my dad <laughs> and his sister are the are the owners of them. Um, yeah. Well, it's lovely to see them here, Joe. Thank you very much for bringing in Ruth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At the exhibition, Eric Tucker, the unseen artist, is on at the Warrington Museum and Art Gallery until the 23rd of February.